Hey, what's up guys? Toogie here, back again, and welcome to the start of my San Jose Sharks franchise mode series right here on NHL 20. It feels great to finally be able to say that. If you want a little bit more of an explanation as to why I'm a little bit late to the party on the NHL 20 side of things, check out the video that goes over the roster editing that I did uh, that went up alongside this video, as well as the other franchise mode series that we are starting. This episode, more of a setup episode. There will be another episode of this up on Sunday, getting back into the alternating days, right? So one day it'll be a Sharks and then maybe Madden or FIFA, whatever's next to it. Next day, it'll be the other series. Now, as far as why I picked San Jose, I wanted to do a more straightforward series and we'll go over the rules in a second. But to me, the Sharks are kind of the perfect team because it's a rebuild on the fly. When you look at the roster that they have, Joe Thornton just re-signed, and that's really what sealed the deal for me with wanting to run this franchise, was trying to win immediately and still retooling and rebuilding on the fly because, of course, it is a fairly competent team with Meyer, Logan Couture, Evander Kane leading the way as we move forward. So we'll go over the team in a minute, but when it comes to how this is set up, you might notice owner mode's not on. I've been playing with it online, uh, or you know, on Twitch at least, and it's still just kind of there. Even with the auto stuff on in the background, the only real challenge it provides is limiting the amount of money that you have to work on coaching staff and on scouts. But what I kind of want this series to be is me just kind of playing franchise mode. I mean, I'm going to have your input, of course, on a couple of different things, including something at the end of this episode, but... I just kind of want to play. That's the one thing I haven't been able to do yet is put a lot of time into franchise mode, try to break a couple of things, and just seeing, you know, truly how difficult it is to build a team, a winning team. More importantly, of course, the series counterbalancing. This one's a challenge series because we always have our challenge series. So, owner mode's off. When it comes to a couple of the other different settings, uh, morale is on for the sake of, you know, working with players and having the new coach interactions, which I, I don't mind, actually, the new player interactions and the coach interactions. I actually don't mind them. I think they're they're okay. They're going to need a little bit of fine-tuning, but it's better than what we had in NHL 19 with that version of the morale system. Is this where I want to be? I don't know if it is. It is. When it comes to sim engine scoring... I'm going to keep it on medium for now because I've had it on high for the Twitch series that we've been running over the past week, the viewer pick draft of glory that we've been running there. And while certainly the scoring is higher, Goldie's save percentages are a little bit lower than I thought they would be, as in anybody having over a 920 is a rarity, a huge rarity. So I want to see how medium works in terms of the scoring, see what that looks like, and maybe make adjustments from there. I don't know if we'll have to do the kind of like the perfect mix. Like I wonder if medium with icing and offsides off is a little bit better than the current high setting. We'll figure that out in due time. But that was the big setting that I wanted to let you guys know. Fog of War, of course, is going to be off. I really like Fog of War, but for the sake of a YouTube series, it makes more sense to have it off because, of course... When we make a draft pick, you guys want to know immediately who we have. So I completely get that. Gameplay slider is the only thing that's really been changed. I think I bumped up the attribute effect slider for the hell of it. Uh, we've toned down injuries a little bit, but injuries are going to be on at the start of this. If it gets to be a little bit crazy, we can tune it down a little bit more. And if it's still overly ridiculous, we can just turn them off. That's fine. That's always, I don't want to say a point of contention, but some people like injuries to be on. Some people do not. So I think that pretty much covers everything about the setup. Again, unlike the Hurricane series from NHL 19, it's not going to be too rule crazy. That was rule crazy because it was far, far too easy to build a good team. But with the changes that have been made to franchise mode this year, especially when it comes to goaltenders and their trade values, I don't think uh, it'll be as easy. So again, this is pretty much just going to be me playing through this and you know, kind of setting the tone for the rest of NHL 20. Now, when it comes to this starting Sharks team, again, we're not in that bad of a spot. The top six is solid. Joe Thornton's back. The bottom six leaves a bit to be desired, but I'm really intrigued to see, of course, line chemistry being back in. I'm loving it so far, especially too, because 
Um, so I'm still discovering, of course, I think as a lot of people are, the proper combinations, but a lot of the combinations that used to work back in like NHL 2004 still work. For example, this second line is Sniper, Playmaker, and Power Forward. That gets us a good boost, not to mention, of course, the scheme fits. Like Joe Thornton perfectly syncs up with the current head coach that we have, you know, hence the plus three. While these guys, unfortunately, Hurdle and Couture aren't a perfect match for that top line, but I do want Tomas Hurdle to be on the top line. He is our only official first line guy. The other five members of the top six are second liners. So the team's set up that way for a reason. Defensively, I mean, obviously, you know, dealing with the Brent Burns contract is going to be interesting. And I think I'll probably stay loyal to that more than likely. I don't just want, as you will know if you've watched a series of mine in the past, I don't like to just be like, nope, that Burns contract's going to be a problem. Trade finder, get him out of here. We're going to stick with them. We're going to stick with a decent amount of the core of this team. Hopefully not Martin Jones for that long. Unless he can... Oh, good. Oh, that's that's oh, that's a preseason game too, Martin. Oh, boy. That could be problematic in the future. But you get the point as far as what this team is. And like I said, the rebuild on the fly and where we'll be going... The AHL team, there are some decent, you know, members of this, you know, some decent pieces to this team. We'll actually take a look at our trade values right now. Take a look at the coaching staff as well. But when it comes to the values, let's start over. Uh, number one, draft pick wise, we do not have our own first round pick. That is unfortunate. So obviously, the deeper we can make it into the playoffs, the better. In terms of project goaltenders, that is something that we are going to have to work on in the future. Uh, but Martin Jones is pretty much the guy for now. Defensively, of course, Carlson, Burns, and Ryan Merkley, for that matter, with high value. I'll be intrigued, in terms of a roster editing perspective, what Ryan Merkley looks like by the end of NHL 20. Because whatever the hell is going on with him and his reputation, it's, it's going to be interesting because it is going to have an effect as to, you know, how we adjust him throughout the year. But for this series, at least... He should be pretty solid for us. And then we'll just look at the forwards in general. Timo Meyer, the best value player on our team, for forwards at least. But, of course, Couture, Kevin LeBanc. Yes, we did edit it. Set Logan Couture as the captain. Tomas Hurdle. Dylan Gambrell, who's down in the AHL this season. Intrigued to see what he can do. But, like I said, it's a pretty good team to try and rebuild on the fly with. And hopefully it works out. I mean, the first goal right out of the gates when with Joe Thornton. And that's <laughs> whether or not that's possible, time will tell. I mean, you look at our cap situation right now. Of course, this is the team we're going to roll with. We don't have a ton of money to spend. The good thing is in terms of the coaching staff, we are set up pretty damn well. Now, of course, they don't have the licenses for the coaches, but the default coaches on each team are kind of set up in a way to mirror the real-life counterparts that would actually be on the team, right? So when it comes to Mr. Doan here, Clifford Doan, he is somewhat based off of Peter DeBoer. At least that's what I've been told. Now, Sharks fans could argue Peter DeBoer would not have that higher ratings, but... You get the point. He's at least there, and he is a pretty damn solid coach to start things off. Good team fit at least, plays an offensive style, which is going to benefit us well, you know, with especially the defensemen that we have on this team with Burns and Carlson leading the way. And in general, I mean, Lahu, not bad. Hoyle's not too bad as at least a penalty kill, when in fairness, it's power play. It's, it's a glitch right now. No, okay, it is penalty kill. It's the free agent list that's me you know, messed up. But at the very least, we have a decent coaching staff to start, which I'm pretty damn happy about. Like I said, overall, I'm digging where this team is, what we're looking like, and what this first season will be, because this first season is going to dictate how we move forward. If we're not winning games, then that certainly raises questions as we move closer to the deadline over what this is going to be and how this series is going to go for us. Now, in terms of the draft as well, of course, there are the players. You know, the editing doc covers that as well, but players that would have been added, players that would have been edited to be a little bit better so that they'll actually be impact players in this draft. 
Uh, and that goes through, I believe, the first three or four years of the draft we have set up right now. So very happy to have had the roster editing done and to be set up. So what I wanted to ask you guys, again, this is not going to be the longest episode. I want this to be just kind of the setup episode, what you guys can expect. You can give your feedback to me on what you think you should do, what you want to see from this series, how we should approach certain things, especially this first season. But I do have one thing to ask you. We heard a few weeks ago, or actually, really, I think it was last week, the Sharks told Patrick Marlowe, hey, we want to go with some of our younger guys. And then they signed Joe Thornton. So I just want to know, do we keep the team the same? Because I don't like rating the free agent list at the beginning, right? But I just want to know, do we sign Patrick Marlowe? Do we bring him back? And do we go for it all this year with Thornton and Marlowe on the team? I feel like it's the right thing to do, although it is showing us right now with 51 contracts, so maybe we uh, maybe we ditch somebody. But let me know what you think. Vote in the eye thingy up in the corner. Patrick Marlowe, are we signing him or not? Because I feel like I feel like it's only fair. Like I said, that really caught me off guard last week or the other day, really. When it's like, no, we're not going to bring back, we're not going to bring back uh, Patrick Marlowe. We want to focus on the youth. And then they signed Joe Thornton. I don't get it at all. But hey, that is what it is. I'll leave the option up to you guys. Do we start things off with a bang? Do we bring back Patrick Marlowe for the year and try to make this a season to remember? But in terms of the Pro Scouts, well, Pro Scouts aren't a giant thing with uh, Fog of War off. He is going to fit on this team very well. And it could happen. Uh, if you guys decide that is the way to go. In terms of signing anybody else, I think we're good. Uh, defensively, yeah, there's no denying. You know, bringing in even like a Freddie Clayson would be an improvement, but I think we'll be okay, all things considered. And then goaltending-wise, there's nobody there. There are no good prospects to sign because, of course, I, I made sure that there were no good prospects to sign uh, aside from like a medium nine, but there, yeah, there's nobody there. So I wanted to leave that question up to you guys. Let me know what you think, of course, of the series in general. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what goes down. Will Patrick Marlowe be a San Jose Shark? Will we be able to be cup contenders through the first few seasons? We are going to find out very, very soon. If you're hyped for this series, if you enjoyed the setup episode, you know the deal. Support the channel. Leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Would you? Damn. And I will see you guys in the next one. The NHL 20 hype is real. It's finally here. But will Patrick Marlowe be a shark?